I've been struggling to uh, make this recording because uh, I didn't think that I would be able to do it without crying. And I was right. But I feel like uh, the Latinos and Latinas who are gatekeeping Selena uh, uh, Quintanilla Perez need a word from someone who was older than the internet Someone who is older than Google. Someone who is older than the advent of smartphones. So here I am in all my 1985 auntiness um, with a word of caution. To the people who are gatekeeping Selena, meaning they are all over TikTok, these youth, these uh, teens and 20s all over TikTok, uh yelling at black people i mean all people but especially black people for uh using selena tiktok sounds and you know um expressing their affection for her i guess there's this new netflix thing that i have uh never seen in my life i don't have netflix but now there's a series on her life that uh personally i i don't need to see because i remember her while she was alive Right, we were alive while she was alive. We experienced her. We were lucky enough to do that, but also, some of us, uh, older Selena fans, we are, uh, we're still like truly traumatized by her death and the way that she died. I wanted to say this to the Latinx community. Selena got called uh, the Mexican Madonna in her lifetime in the 90s. While some of you were not alive, some of you were just babies, she got called a Mexican Madonna. And I found this offensive. (laughs) Right, because they would try to compare everybody to Madonna. Janet Jackson is so much greater than Madonna, but they would try to call her, you know, the black Madonna, whatever. But I will say this Selena is the Chicana Michael Jackson. She is the Michael Jackson of the Mexicans. Now, you think at your age, whether you are Gen Z, Gen Alpha, a millennial, the way, what Michael is to you and in this culture. And then imagine African-Americans gatekeeping Michael, telling you to lay off of his music, lay off of all our culture and all these other things. Michael and Selena, there, there's a ringing in my left ear. Okay, so <clears throat> Michael and Selena are very transcendent characters. And there are so many people named Michael and there are so many people named Selena, but every now and then you get a person who lives the definition of their name, right? And Michael, you have an angel of mercy, right? Definition of the name, Mikhail. Uh, anglicized Michael, whatever you want to call it, you know, but from Semitic languages, from Arabic, Mikhail, right? And that is how he lived and died, regardless of whatever slander you may have heard from leaving Neverland and and uh, people who are intimidated by his greatness. Selena died so young that we didn't really get to see her get there where we knew she was going. And you have people like me with two black parents, like Beyonce with two black parents, who, I mean, enamorada, enamored with Selena during our lifetimes, during her lifetime. And Michael and Selena are extremely um, 
I would say transcendent. Like, you can find Michael's music all over the world, whether people know English or not. It is our belief, the fans who are alive at the time, that this was her trajectory before her life was cut short by the president of her fan club, right? I don't even... I don't even want to say her name. So, Selena is a name uh, that often people translate as the moon. And when Selena was a little girl, she did a lot of like staring at the moon, sitting on her roof, sitting outside, staring at the moon. I think, in my opinion, as a person who like when I started, I just had this ringing in my ear, this ringing in my ear, right? Um, a very spiritually inclined person. Selena also means moon goddess. And it is my opinion that Selena in her body incarnated moon goddess energy. And she brought that to the earth. And she had this larger than life star power. And what was so beautiful about like, I mean, everything was so beautiful about Selena. I mean, her teeth, her lips, her smile, her waist, her body, her voice. Um, I remember Selena would, uh, she would let people come on stage, especially her own people. And hug her and kiss her, you know, in the middle of performances. And um, there was a concert where, you know, the stage was caving because the fans were going crazy. And she could have died. But she went back out there for the love of the people. And what I know about Selena... As a fan who lived during her lifetime, is that she was not anti black anywhere. She didn't have an anti black bone in her body. You can look at some of her performances, you can see some of the people she had behind her dancing on stage with her, uh, uh, performing with her, uh, but also. Her largest influence, like she's supposed to be the queen of Tejano music. But if you've ever listened to Tejano music before, Selena, you you can tell me that it sounds like, like, like if you've ever heard like, okay, so obviously you have, if you're a fan, you've heard two solo two. That's what Tejano sounds like. Tejano doesn't sound like bitty bitty bum bum. Tejano doesn't sound like dreaming of you. Tejano doesn't sound like El Chico del Apartamento Cinco Doce. Uh, Tejano doesn't sound like uh, I'm getting used to you. Like Selena's largest influences during her lifetime, her and AJ, they were just all about Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson. And as much as Selena was true to her culture, she was also part of pop culture and you could see the African American in the way that she moved her body and I you are a liar if you disagree. You could see Michael and Janet all over her. All over her. Yes, this woman is a creative, this woman is an original, this woman is to me, I mean we were witnessing the incarnation of a goddess. Or maybe if I say goddess, that's too heavy for you. But what I mean is divine feminine energy that heals. And so we loved her with the love that she loved us with. This was a true humanitarian. This woman had a big, goofy heart. She loved everybody and everybody loved her back. And so you have, you know, this, uh, what is it? This Gen Z, you guys want to cancel everybody and cancel people's affection for Selena. 
and like, oh, you can't sing these songs. I got news for you. I, I don't speak a lick of Spanish, you know, but I, I psh, everything on todos mis exitos, I can sing. Like, like with a, with a good accent and people are like, oh, you know, you speak Spanish. And I'm like, nope, I only speak Selena. I, I don't know nothing else. You can't have a conversation with me. It's, it's not going to work out. <laughs> I remember going every day to work and playing Selena on my radio and I, I would literally cry every day in my car. And people are like, oh, you know, you guys just care about Selena because, you know, she's popping now. You know, you don't really care. And I'm just like, true Selena fans never stopped giving a damn. They never stopped since the 90s. I mean, before this stuff was even cool, like I still had like, you know, in 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, like but before there was a Netflix special, before there was a lipstick release, like that was still in my car every day. Um... I feel like there is a reintroduction going on to the life and legacy of Selena, probably because the president of her fan club should be getting out of prison soon. Who shot her? Um, I think that may have something to do with the Netflix special, but I wouldn't know because I haven't watched one day of it i haven't watched one episode of it but take it from your tt i'm 36 years old we there are people all over the world who grew up loving selena before some of you gatekeepers were born This is not something you can cut us out of. And I understand the frustration. Trust me, I'm an African-American. My culture is freaking global. And because people, you know, take from my culture so much, they will tell me I don't have one because everybody do, does what we create, right? I had a guy tell me, I had a white guy tell me K-pop had nothing to do with African-American culture. And I was just like, dude, I, oh. <laughs> I couldn't even talk to him. I was like, it's literally an, an interpretation of African-American pop culture, but okay, you know? So I get wanting to gatekeep, and I do encourage you to gatekeep, but I also encourage you in your gatekeeping, which, which is important because it leads to the preserving of a culture, know who you're gatekeeping. Some of this gatekeeping is truly anti-blackness. Some of this, I mean, there isn't, I, I can't think of a black person, maybe you Gen Zers, I just don't know enough, but I can't think of a single black person who, I mean, we live through cultural appropriation every day. We know what it feels like, more so than most cultures. If I could be honest, more so than you. Because our culture is more worldwide, more worldwidely consumed than Chicano culture, than uh, Mexican culture, than Mestizo culture. Like, we, we suffer from that all the time. I don't know an African American who is not woke enough to culturally appreciate Selena without culturally appropriating Selena. There were black kids, South Central LA, Bed Stuy, Brooklyn, Seattle, Washington. We we still forgive like like J Lo messes up so much. J J Lo says some of the nasty and does, but we forgive her because she was a flag girl and because she was Selena, right? There are so many little black kids before there were smartphones, you know. Before there were these little, you know. Dude, all I'm trying to say is like we would be watching our little 
like commercial break, like come back, come back, Selena's back on, Selena's back on. And you know, anything for Selena's and like we didn't we weren't like trying to crap on, you know, like, you know, Chicano accents. We just loved the scene. We loved the scene of the movie because we felt like we we would have let her we would have tried to pull her card too. Cause anything for Selena. I mean, w- without trying to pull the race card, I think the hardest group of people that Selena had, the hardest time she had with a group of people are white people and other Mexicans. And I don't think she had a hard time with the Mexicans because of, you know, anything bad. I, it's like she had to learn Spanish. Th- this is This is... You know, there's a difference between a Mexican and a Chicana. I mean, this is a uh, Corpus Christi. This is a woman from Texas. She had to learn Spanish and she had bad Spanish for a long time. And it wasn't a good look. It wasn't a good look. (laughs) And anybody who has, who comes from a group of people who have another language, who speak another language, or they have, you know, English as a second language, y'all know what the deal is already. And it's like, what? What's she talking about, man? Get this wannabe green guy out of here. What is going on, you know? People gave her a hard time. And then, of course, you know, white people discriminated against her because she came from such a working class people. Selena was born, like, right after Reaganomics. So I don't know what you really know about the history and what she was born into. But the level of racism and classism and different things that, especially at that time, Mexicans were suffering from, there is a kinship between Mexican and Blacks. Now, Mexican and Blacks, I don't know what's wrong with this. We got a problem. But Gen X is probably my favorite generation. Silent generation, baby boomers, millennials, Gen Z, Gen Alpha, like Gen X is the hill the world make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. The the USA for Africa, the Michael Jackson, the philanthropy, and Selena was a part of that. And all I'm saying is do not remove her from her context. There's, there's, there's not a 2021 Selena. 90s Selena is the timeless Selena. She, she wasn't an anti-black. She, she wasn't bigoted. If she had a problem with a group of people, it was legitimate. But she didn't have that with us. So as you go in your 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 TikTok world, there's this little black girl, right? And she's not African American. I don't know if she's British or Caribbean or what, but like, you know, she's uh singing Selena songs in the car with her dad, right? And what's funny about her is she is all of us. I mean, she's telling her dad, like, translating, oh, canta, it means sing, blah, blah, blah. You know, like when she's singing biri biri bum bum. And I'm just like, we were all screaming <laughs> Selena in, in our cars and bedroom. I mean, uh, what is it? No, uh, Mika Damas. Like, we were all screaming. like we were all like screaming we didn't know what the words were but the emotions transcended we just felt it we were all screaming we ain't know what we were talking about we just know yo meant I (laughs) but we, we felt it and of course, you have the English music. Here's the deal. Donna Summer, right? First, I was afraid. I was petrified. Kept thinking I could never live without. Like, for some reason, my version, when I want to sing, sing, every time the version that comes out of me is a Selena's version. I don't know why. Eh. Okay? <laughs> I don't know why. 
But people are expressing genuine love for Selena Quintanilla Perez. And it's an assault on the goodness in our hearts. To try to stifle people from the affection they feel for her. Selena is a woman who died in her goodness. We never got to see her, excuse me, be the B word. We never got to see her do something dumb. We never got to see her do something worth canceling her for. So all we have is love. And I know this sounds condescending, but this is from your auntie who was a fan before you were born. I mean, me and Beyonce are only a few years apart. Maybe five years apart, I don't know. But, um... I don't know if anything I said was effective here, but I just hope that I can promote the type of love in your heart and mind that Selena had in hers. That's all I wanted to say. I'm not putting it out of here.